Hello, everyone. We're the 22 Designs Binding Bushing Test. I'm Jack McCutcheon with Greg Malone, Rachel Mitlicky, Jack Donaldson, and Dante Cusolito. So some background. The snow sports industry has seen a recent explosion in a consumer need for ski equipment to provide easy access to the backcountry. While not as widespread as alpine skiing or snowboarding, Telmark skiing is similarly affected by this increase in demand. 22 Designs, founded by two Clarkson alumni, make Telmark bindings with a secondary ski touring function shown in the figure to the right. Um, the binding pivots at an axle bushing assembly at the toe, which is press fit into the base of the binding shown in the figure to the right. The current production bindings uh, resist shock loading well, um, which is jumps, crashes, that kind of thing. They do not uh, limit touring wear. So when the skier goes uphill and places skins on the bottom of the ski, similar to a cross country ski, uh, backcountry travel, it, they last around 10 days of hard use before the bushings start to critically ovalize and impinge on function. So the key question is, what is the optimal material for use in bushings and 22 designs bindings to resist both cyclic wear and brittle fracture? Twenty Two Designs has begun to look into this issue of the bushings wearing out during the touring orientation, but has yet to reach a firm and concrete conclusion as to what their next step forward should be. As you can see in the figure to the right, the flat on the bottom of the bushing begins to wear out while touring, leading to slop or play uh, during the rotation, which then leads to total bushing failure very, very quickly. The binding is no longer safe and able to be skied. They are currently using two materials in their uh, hands-on testing that they're doing. They're using aluminized bronze in the production model and oil light as their potential alternative. The aluminized bronze is a safer option for them currently because it holds up well during the actual skiing, uh, going off a drop, a fall, any of that. However, it's during the touring that that material fails. The super oil light by comparison works extremely well during touring with no real failure rate there. But when skiing is uh, too easy to fail, uh, it happens too frequently that they don't feel like that is a safe option. Uh, so the goal of our project was to find an alternative material that could withstand the forces seen skiing while also withstand the cyclic wear that is seen during touring. So if we could match the performance of the aluminized bronze in terms of strength, but improve upon its values in touring. That was our goal. After talking to 22 Designs, they told us that the failure tended to occur within 10 days of skiing for their heavier testers of about 250 pounds. So using this information, we determined that a day of ski touring consists of about 10 miles in tour mode with an average person taking around 2000 steps per mile. So using this data, um, we decided that each ski will experience around 10,000 cycles in a day. So this adds up to about 80,000 cycles of loading and unloading while pivoting for the material to fail. So that's how we chose to use 80,000 cycles. And then for the 250 pound force, we used, chose this due to the 250 pound skier that they're finding failure with. We chose a sine wave to represent this movement as it is a good example of how the skier will be putting force on the binding while moving their heel up and down while touring. To set up the test, we uh, connected a servo to our binding assembly that moved at pseudo-random angles from 0 to 60 degrees, as that's the max range that the binding is able to move while touring. Um, so this rotated the bushing and binding in while the force is being applied to represent the touring movement. Uh, we used a set point of negative 534 newtons which is about 120 pound force, and then an amplitude of 578 newtons, which brings the force acting on the material to about 250 pounds up and 10 pounds down, which simulates the movement of the 250 pound skier while touring. The main budget for this testing was provided through the 401 class. 
um, although 22 designs provided materials. They provided us with the um, binding housings as well as the bushings um, and some technical drawings of their uh, other components. And so then we also had to purchase, using the 401 budget, we had to purchase um, some more bushings and some um, metal stock, as well as a servo motor and couplers. The um, power supply and Arduino were supplied by team members, and the entire budget that was used from the MEAE 401 class was $193.92. The timeline for the semester is shown here. It was followed in order, although with an accelerated schedule towards the end of the semester, primarily due to delays in receiving components and being allotted time on the load frame. So the bushing interacts with the frame through an interference fit and Design into the frame and the bushing is a flat indexing surface so that the bushing doesn't rotate when torque is applied to it by the axle which is being stepped on. So the way to determine whether a bushing has failed and to what degree is to determine whether or not that flat surface has, has rounded out due to torque and cyclical wear and whether or not the bushing now has degree uh, angles of freedom within the frame that it's not supposed to move in. So in order to determine this, once the test was completed, we took the bushing and marked the surface and the flange and determined how far away from that initial position you could rotate the bushing while keeping it flush with the frame. Uh, the results of that were that the oil light, which is known for its high cyclical wear resistance, actually had no, no cyclical wearing out of that flat surface. So it, it did not rotate at all, neither bushing. Uh, the aluminized bronze had an average of 8.25 between the two bushings. And the manganese bronze had actually an average of 1.5 degrees of play between the two bushings. But it's interesting to note that the manganese bronze only had one bushing experience play and the other one was completely fine and that is correlated to the fact that the manganese bronze bushings were custom made and uh, the the two bushings were out of tolerance one of them was above the tolerance size for um, the race interface and the other one was below so the one that was below actually had some play it had about three degrees and the one that was above had no play, which makes sense because um, the the bushing wearing out is uh, it accelerates itself. Meaning, if there's more play, it's going to happen faster. So, uh, if they had both been within tolerance, there's a good chance that both would have succeeded and had no no wear, no visible wear. In terms of error within our project, there's definitely a couple areas that can be touched upon as each one of these could have impacted our results. Uh, first and foremost, when machining the manganese bronze bushings, the lathe that we were using had a tolerance of about 20 thousandths, plus or minus in the cross carriage. So every diameter um, was uh, harder to reach a, an ideal dimension based on the drawing. One of the bushings that we made came out uh, perfectly two dimension and the other was about two to three thou under for each diameter measurement. It's unclear whether the uh, difference in sizing of diameter was the reason for failure, or premature failure of the manganese bronze bushing um, as the, the undersized one was one that began to rotate within the frame uh, but definitely something important to note. This could have been better proved out um, if we had done a larger sample size of each material as well. For each material, we were only able to do one test timing-wise, so one test being one material, two bushings each. Um, it would have been nice to do more test series per material as well as more materials as a whole. 
And finally, the load frame um, is rated to 100 kilonewtons of force in the load cell. Uh, and we are very close to the bottom end of, of its uh, capacity, running at a max of 500 newtons. Uh, so it's unclear whether the calibration of the load cell was, was accurate in the ranges that we were working in. Um, so using a more appropriately sized load cell could have yielded better results as well as the, the forces applied to the system could have been better verified as completely accurate. In summary, our group will recommend manganese bronze to 22 designs as an improved material in terms of cyclical wear resistance over aluminized bronze. We have determined from this preliminary testing that manganese bronze shows a lot of potential in terms of resisting the wearing out of that flat indexing surface. Uh, however, due to the sources of error discussed earlier, uh, it becomes important that more testing is done with uh, multiple samples per material type, as well as uh, very close attention page, paid to tolerancing so that we can standardize the test more and get more lengthy and thorough results. In terms of impact testing, we expect the manganese bronze to perform on par with aluminized bronze, if not better due to its uh, almost double yield strength value. However, before these bushings are brought to market, it would be important to conduct physical impact testing to verify the safety of the product and the safety of the customer.